Hello, hello YouTube, and welcome to another one of my Shopify Liquid tutorial videos. Today, we're gonna to take a look at iteration in Shopify Liquid, and we'll look at how you can use iteration in your templates in order to create repeating items or to loop through an array of products or a list of products. And just like in any programming language where you have this for loop where you can loop through lists or arrays to get all of the items in it, we can do the same thing in Shopify so that in your templates, you could display, for example, a list of collections or a list of products or a list of policies, which is what we will look at in our example in today's code. So let's jump into the code and take a look. Okay, so let's look at iteration in Liquid. We have the for tag, which is one of the three different types of iteration that you can use. There's also the cycle and table row tags. We're not gonna look at the cycle and table row tags today. They're a bit more advanced. And if you do need to use those, you can always take a look at the Shopify documentation. For the for tag, we open up the tag with a percent symbol and brace like we always do for tags. We give it a temporary variable that our item in the list is gonna get assigned to. So in this case, we'll say policy in and then the list. So we're gonna use the shop object, which comes from Shopify. And you can again, read the documentation for more info on that. And we can say shop.policies if you wanna get all of the policies on your store. Then we can close our for block. And then inside of that for block, we can do something. So let's print out our policy.title. There we go. Now that we've printed out our policy.title, we can run this and you're gonna see that nothing gets printed out here on the right hand side. So why is that? Well, we don't actually have any policy set up in our store right now. Now, if you have a for loop like this and nothing gets printed, that might not be the best user experience if nothing shows on the page. So instead we can add an else block here, which will then say, if there's nothing in the list, if the list is empty, let's print this out instead. So we'll say, there are no policies on this store. And if I save that, you're gonna see that we get the else block here. Now let's go add some policies to our store. So we will go up and into the policies and legal page on Shopify and we'll add a refund policy. You cannot return any items. Terrible refund policy. All right, uh, privacy policy. Whoops, that's not what I wanna do. Privacy policy, your data is sort of private. <laughs> I don't think I'd shop from this store. Okay, let's save this. So we have two policies input here. And if we go back and we save this again, and we will see here that we get refund policy and privacy policy, okay? They're both on the same line because I'm not creating new lines here or new paragraph tags or anything like that, but we get our two policies printed out. So that's how you would do a for loop and have an else case in case your list is empty. Now. Another thing that we can do is we can have a break statement like you would have in a for loop in many programming languages. So we could have something where we say, going back to our conditional logic, if policy dot title, let's just say is equal to, let's say refund policy, then we will break. So inside of here, we'll say percent break, percent close the brace, and then we gotta close off our if. So end if. All right, now, if we run this, we're gonna see that we get nothing. And that's because it comes down into the for loop, it checks the if, and it notices that the first thing in the list is the refund policy, so it hits the break and it never actually prints out any policy titles, and our for loop ends, okay? If I were to move this block, or if I, yeah, if I move this block down below the policy.title, okay, so if we move it down here, then it'll print the title and then break out, okay? So it won't print out the second title because it's breaking here, so it's not gonna get to the second uh, title, which is the uh, privacy policy. Okay, so that's how you would use a break. Now we can also use a continue. So if we wanted to, let's just say, print out the title and then continue on with what you're doing, we could say percent continue. 
and that's not going to change anything here it's just going to run like it normally would okay but if we wanted to let's say instead of just breaking when we find that uh, actually let's get this back when we find that policy okay let's continue instead so in here we would say continue save that and then it's just going to print privacy policy so what continue will do is it will continue the for loop but it will skip everything else that is inside of that for block so in this case it's not going to print out the refund policy because we don't want to print that policy out we just want to print out whatever else is in the policy so in this case we continue after we find refund policy and print out the next thing privacy policy now the other thing that you can do with for loops is you can sort of filter your list okay and there's different ways you can do that so you can filter this list before your loop actually starts and i would highly recommend this for performance reasons in your shopify store you don't always want to loop through every single product or every single policy or every single item uh, in a store sometimes you want those loops to be as quick as possible and only get the data you need because that way your store will load faster so one thing you can do is you can say limit so you could say limit and then put a colon and then add uh, a number there so if we just limit this to one policy i'm going to remove this if in here and we'll print out the policy title and if i limit that to one you're going to see that we only get refund policy okay if i put the limit to two it's going to print out both of them right but if there were any more it would only print out the first two now the other thing we can do is we can offset so if you know that you only want data that is at say the end of your list we could say offset by one and in this case when i save that it's just going to print privacy policy because it's going to start at the second item in the list you also can print out a range so if you want to get a bunch of numbers for some reason in an, uh, in order we could print out a range with those numbers so let's create a new for loop here and we'd say i in and then our range so the starting number and then our ending number so let's say three to five and then we close this in here we'll just print out the value of i and then we'll end our for loop and we close that off and if we run this it's going to say three four five because it prints out the numbers in that range so if you have a need to print out a whole bunch of numbers in a range you can do it that way and you can also use variables as the start or end of your range so we're going to look at variables in a future video but if we created a variable here called my limit and we make that equal to I'll say 10 and then i put my variable my limit here we can use that as my end range and then if i save this it'll print three four five six seven eight nine ten because ten is my high bound on my range another thing we can do is we can reverse our lists okay so if you had let's just undo this and go back to our policies here so if we have our policies we could say reverse reversed and what we re re reversed would do is it would reverse the order that our list prints out in so in this case i get privacy policy first and then refund policy that's all that we need to cover for for loops i hope that that helped and you can see how you can iterate through lists of items in a liquid template thanks for tuning in to another one of my shopify liquid tutorial videos if you enjoyed this video and it helped you learn a little bit more about shopify liquid templating then feel free to leave a thumbs up on the video and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to catch more of our shopify liquid tutorial videos and future development tutorial videos that we're going to be doing here thanks have a great day